This episode of The Young Turks is brought to you by Gamefly. Go to Gamefly.com slash TYT for your free trial membership. We've been in Afghanistan for over 10 years now, and uh, it's an ongoing disaster. I know why we went in the first place. I was in favor of going in the first place. It seemed like Taliban was giving sanctuary to al-Qaeda, who did directly attack us on 9-11. In my mind, that made sense. Now, 10 years later, uh, we're not in the same war that we were in the beginning. Al-Qaeda is long gone. Even our CIA admits that there might be less than 50 al-Qaeda left in the whole country. There's far more al-Qaeda in Pakistan, Yemen, Somalia, you name it, right? So what are we doing there? Well, now a lot of the people in Afghanistan are fighting us because we're fighting them. And, but we keep talking about momentum and, and winning. I don't know what we're winning. And this uh, story is the perfect example of our confusion, in my opinion, and how counterproductive the war has become now. So uh, it is uh, a blog written by Paula Broadwell. She uh, often covers Afghanistan and knows Petraeus, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And she's approving of all of this, which I don't approve of. But she talks about uh, what uh, the 1 320th uh, Division uh, of our forces, the Combined Joint Task Force, uh, has been doing in the Argandab River Valley, right? And one of the things that they did was they ran into a village called Tarok Kalache, and uh, they they had trouble getting in and out of the village. There was IEDs, home uh, uh, improvised explosive devices, etc., and it's jerry-rigged, and the guys are getting killed. They're going in there, not only killed in action, but wounded in action. They don't know how to go through, but they say that they're afraid that they cannot afford to lose momentum. So their commander, David Flynn, makes a decision. We're going to destroy the village to save the village. Now, if you think that's an exaggeration, wait till you get a load of the pictures. Let me show you a before picture. That's the village right there before we go in, Tarak Kalache. Now, let me show you the after picture. Gone. Obliterated. They dropped 25 tons of bombs on the village. David Flynn says, quote, it was the only way I could give the men confidence to go back out. The only way? The only way to uh, give the men confidence that they could go to the village is to completely and utterly destroy the village? That's amazing. Flynn uh, says, look, he did have some, uh, you know, concerns as they were bombing the village. And what he's concerned about is amazing. Uh, let me tell you uh, his quote here. I literally cringed when we dropped bombs on these places. He starts that way and I think, okay, good. He continues, not because I cared about the enemy we were killing or the HEM destroyed. HEM is the homemade explosives. But I knew the reconstruction would consume the remainder of my deployed life. Now, forget the enemy. Of course, that the whole point of war is to kill the enemy, right? But how about the villagers? How about the people in the village? Now, they say they gave them warnings, but remember, they can't even go into the village because it's littered with landmines, and they're afraid to go in. That's why they destroyed it in the first place. So are you absolutely convinced that they got every innocent civilian and villager out of there before they dropped the 25 tons of bombs? I hope they made their best effort. But that doesn't, hey, is someone still left in the houses? That's not what concerning uh, uh, Flynn here. He's concerned, oh, damn it, once I do this, i got to rebuild the thing. Now, look, to our credit, after we bomb things, we try to rebuild them, which not a lot of other countries have done in the history of mankind, right? That is to our credit. But why are we bombing it in the first place? And what kind of momentum are you losing by not destroying the village? Do you get, do you get that? Remember, their initial response was, we have to destroy the village, otherwise we'll risk our momentum. But then you're going to have to stay there for months on end, maybe years on end, to rebuild the village. So where did your momentum go? This is circular and ridiculous, and for the people that are living in that village, barbaric. <laughs> he says that uh, once they started rebuilding, then he, there was, of course, trouble. Who are the true landowners? Very hard to know in Afghanistan who holds a deed, because a lot of people don't hold a deed. Then everybody starts to argue, say, oh, no, no, I had that land. No, I had all these different tracts of land. And then they got to trust the people who are the leadership in that village to tell them who did and did not own the land. Uh, and then you get into land valuation. How much was the land worth? I don't know. We're going to try to figure it out. You think some people didn't get massively hosed in that exchange? Innocent people who lost their homes because the leadership said, oh, no, no, that was my cousin's home. 
And then they and then they talk about the locals in such belittling ways, like, oh, they say, oh, you know, some of them were afraid would run away with the money if we just gave them the money. No, we need to get them involved in rebuilding this town so that we know they're personally invested. They wouldn't have had to rebuild the town if you didn't drop 25 tons of bombs on it. Now, Broadwell, who is talking about all this like it's hunky-dory, she goes on to say, Petraeus came by, and she says, Petraeus commended Flynn's efforts and relayed to M.G. James Terry, the R.C. South commanding general, to take a similar approach to what the 1-320th was doing on a grander scale as it applies to the districts north of Argandop. Petraeus comes by and says, this rocks. Let's do this on a broader scale. This is the war in Afghanistan. It gets worse. Talking about that condescending attitude, uh, there's a guy named Mohammed in the village who is described as the biggest doubter in the village. Yeah, I might doubt too if you just destroyed my home. And by the way, my farm, they destroyed all the orchards nearby. There goes their livelihood. Gee, I wonder why people might want to walk away. And here's how Broadwell describes Mohammed. Quote, Mohammed, who in a fit of theatrics, had accused Flynn of ruining his life after the demolition. In a th fit of theatrics? I wonder how Paula Broadwell would feel if someone destroyed her entire, I don't, if, assuming she lives in a suburb or a city block. They destroyed the whole thing and said, oh, fit of theatrics that you're bothered by that. I, I, do these people have, are they on the same planet? Do they view Afghans the same way that they view Americans or they view any other human being? You do this to somebody's village and you think that it's theatrics that they're upset by it? I don't understand, man. All right, one more from Broadwell. She said, President Karzai's advisor, Mohammed Sadiq Aziz, said Afghan and foreign forces caused unreasonable damage to homes and orchards and displaced a number of people, which is enormously true. She says, indeed, clearing operations are a necessary evil to weed out the Taliban, and they often leave devastating destruction in their wake. But what Aziz failed to note is the tremendous efforts some, uh, effort some units, like the 1-320th, have made to rebuild this country but they wouldn't have to rebuild the country if they didn't destroy it in the first place. And my, here's my overall point to you. What are we doing? Why do we have to weed out the Taliban if the locals are in favor of it? I, I don't, the Taliban don't shelter Al-Qaeda anymore. How are we saving the village from ta the Taliban if the village is on the side of the Taliban and they made homemade explosives against us? It didn't look like they wanted saving. And we saved them by destroying, pulverizing their village. And now we're, it's like, all right, we got to plant the, you know, the trees back again and rebuild the orchards. And God knows how long that'll take so they can regain their livelihood. But you know what? They're worried that it's going to take too long because the pomegranate uh, seedlings, etc., take too long to rebuild it as they were. So they're going to make them switch to saffron. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, just change their entire way of doing things. Do you know if Saffron makes as much money as pomegranate? Who knows? Who cares? We had to save the village by destroying it. This is what we're doing in Afghanistan, and it's a disaster. And gee, I wonder why the locals don't trust us. If they did that to your home, or to your suburb, or to your city block, or to your city or your state, would you trust them? Get out, get out, get out, get out. All it's doing is getting you giving money to defense contractors to get richer and richer and richer. This has nothing to do with helping the people of Afghanistan, and it certainly has nothing to do with helping the people of the United States of America. How does that help us? Not at all. The only thing it does is hurt us. This episode of The Young Turks is brought to you by Gamefly. Go to Gamefly.com slash TYT for a free trial membership.